In this week's video I talk about facet joint osteoarthritis in the cervical spine on MRI. I know it can sound quite boring this topic, but before you skip this video and go to the next one, let me reassure that this is quite an important diagnosis too, because patients have pain in the cervical spine, we do an MR and frequently this diagnosis is not described in reports that I get to see. So therefore I think uh, two points are important, first of all you have to look for it, second of all you need to have the right images and we will go through some cases now together. Please watch till the end because I have a very interesting case at the end of this video. So this is the first patient and as you can see this is just your standard spine MRI, uh, cervical spine MRI. We have some sagittal T2, T1, then some uh, axial sections here and luckily for us we have also a sagittal term sequence here which is very important and we come back to that later. So typically you assess the cervical spine for all these disc herniations and the segment degenerations etc etc and if you only have a T1 and a T2 weighted sequence you might recognize that there is some osteoarthritis in a patient. This one here is uh, probably 70 years old but sometimes it's really hard to say are they a potential cause for the pain of the patient. Even on the T1 weighted sequence you can see we have certainly some osteophytes and some uh, narrowing of the cartilage there. But typically it's not so easy to see. Here it's a little bit darker, maybe here and especially here in this region, also again with osteophytes etc. But it's very important to have a term sequence or any other fluid sensitive weighted sequence with fat saturation because then it's way easier to see this diagnosis. So if I scroll through you can immediately see that we have bone marrow edema, joint diffusion and capsular edema here at the level of the upper cervical spine on the right hand side here between C2 and C3. So this is an osteoarthritis of this facet joint and it's certainly painful for the patient. On your transverse sections you typically see that there is osteoarthritis but it's really hard to appreciate any inflammation going on there at this uh, with this technique. So really the key is a term sequence and if you don't actively look for it you will miss it most of the time. This one is a quite obvious case but we will see more um, difficult cases later on. So you describe all the rest and if you just scroll a little bit through maybe you want to see these uh, foramina etc. Something like this might easily skip your attention, unlike this one. Before we move on, I would like to welcome my newest patrons, and that is Dan, Chris, Eugen and Baichinder. Thanks guys! And thanks also to all my other patrons that are continuing to support my channel over on my Patreon page. If you want to find out more how you can support me, go check the link in the description down below and consider to become a patron as well, because uh, you've been watching these videos for some time now. And uh, yeah, thanks. So this is a different protocol and again we have a T2, T1, this time we have two different kind of axial uh, sequences or images. Then we have the oblique sequences here which are very helpful to assess the neural foramina and to see whether there is some nerve compression. And this time we have a term but it's in a coronal orientation which is fine but I would still prefer a, a sagittal. Anyways, now let's have a look here at this sequence. We can scroll through, we can scroll through the T1 and you might appreciate that there is a degeneration already here but if you do not specifically look for it you will miss it because you're focusing on the disc and maybe this one here jumps into your mind and this one here it's not very obvious on this T1 weighted sequence even less so on the T2 and therefore it's very important to have some kind of fat saturation and you can see immediately we have a very extensive bone marrow edema this time between C1 and C2 on the right hand side and therefore we have an osteoarthritis here with some effusion and bone marrow edema. So this is also very painful for this patient and his most likely pain generator in this case. So here we have another patient, this, you have the images, you go through the typical order, you assess every segment separately, you can see the segmental degenerations here but there is no uh, spinal canal stenosis and no relevant disc herniation. 
then you can see here we have obviously some facet joint degeneration on both sides even there on the T2 sequence nicely visible with the osteophytes then you go over to your T1 weighted sequence you can see the marrow is normal you look here nothing really jumps into our mind and if you have the experience you might suspect here that there is something going on but it's not very obvious now let's pull in a term sequence and then you will immediately see why this sequence is so helpful and you can see we have again bone marrow edema here at the level between C1 and C2 this one here is C1 this one is C2 and this is again osteoarthritis very high in the cervical spine a potential pain generator and it's frequently missed so therefore always give this region as a really dedicated look especially scroll all the way out to the, your most lateral sections to depict this kind of findings there because you can do injections here under CT guidance with steroids or a local anesthetic just be careful because you have the vertebral arteries there but nevertheless we frequently did that and it helps the patients at least for a short period of time and this is the last patient and you can see we also this time have a t1 after gadolinium with fat suppression let me just delete that one we don't need the axials and the term sequence and let's see where we have the problem in this patient so certainly you can already appreciate that there is atlantodental degeneration here we have the normal stuff down here we scroll all the way out on the t2 nothing really jumps our eye t1 is a little bit better in this regard we can see that well we have this facet joint osteoarthritis down here even here but it's not so easy to see the site of inflammation so if you know what to look for it's this region here and you can immediately pull in your term sequence and you can see this time the bone marrow edema is quite subtle you might even miss this on your term sequence to be honest but this is certainly the patient's origin of pain as you can see here just make this a little bit bigger so here again between c1 this is part of the c1 and this is c2 we have osteoarthritis here with bone marrow edema a little bit more subtle than in the previous cases and now let me show you the sequence after gadolinium and you can now see that we have some enhancement at the level where we had the bone marrow edema before so that's typical where you have bone marrow edema typically the bone enhances as well but we also have enhancement of the joint capsule around this joint so therefore this is a osteoarthritis with some inflammation and it's this patient's source of pain so nothing really fancy in this video but my two take-home points would be make sure you do a term sequence preferably in the sagittal orientation but coronal is fine especially if you have some kind of scoliosis too you don't need gadolinium for this diagnosis basically and the second point would be you really have to scroll all the way to the lateral portions of your image stack and specifically look for this facet joint osteoarthritis for the bone edema and the inflammation in the surrounding soft tissue and especially at the upper cervical spine where this is frequent especially in older people and don't miss it because it can make a difference <laughs>